Oh, hi. Welcome back to the Blair White Project. Another episode is upon us. She has risen. And we're back to talk some... You can't swear within the first like minute-ish. We have a lot of things to talk about, a lot of people to drag. Unfortunately, because you guys know how much I hate <laughs> dragging people, especially YouTubers, right? I actually don't like talking about YouTubers a lot, but there are some accusations against Miss Colleen Ballinger, also known as uh, Miranda Sings, that have caught my attention. I've been kind of watching these like predator groomer accusations from the sidelines and sort of like catching wind of it, you know, out of my peripheral type crap. And uh, for a while I was like, is this serious? Is this something, you know, mainstream YouTube loves to cancel their YouTubers for like almost nothing. So half the time when I hear about someone in hot water from like mainstream YouTube, I'm like, is it even like for real or is it not? Uh, it seems like it's for real and we have to drag her because what a freak. You're going to hell, Colleen Ballinger. Like, you're just going to hell. Uh, <laughs> we have Elon Musk declaring cis and cisgender to be slurs on Twitter that are punishable with suspension. Some further context in that and some people to drag within that story, which we will get to. Uh, we have an Elliot Page story. Very cringe LA page story and we have a ton of woke tiktoks to react to so let's get into it we're going to start off with elon musk declares cis and cisgender to be considered slurs now first things first elon musk you took a vow to make twitter a free speech platform i don't like the idea of a word getting someone banned so there's that aspect of it, you know, if, if we're going to stand on free speech, it's like stand on it, stand within it, stand around it, do your big one with free speech. So that's one thing. But another thing you have to note here is that the hypocrisy of the Wokies is just, it, it, you have you have to talk about it because my tweet sums it up. Here's what I tweeted in response to the cis stuff. Because first of all, you know, whenever anything trans happens on Twitter or with Elon Musk, my entire mentions are, what are you going to say, Blair? What's your statement? What's your statement? Here's my statement. I said, uh-oh, the people who have an infinite list of words you can and cannot use for them are mad at women who don't want to be called cis. Because the free speech stuff aside, the irony is not lost on me. In fact, it's quite visible. It's an eyesore that, you know, misgendering, mislabeling, calling someone something they don't identify with is these days viewed as this morally reprehensible like the ultimate transgression of a person's personhood girl of you know just it's considered the worst thing you can do it's the number one sin in that religion because baby girl she's a religion at this point she's a cult at this point she's giving westboro baptist but half the population um, and, you know, and even in some places, it's illegal, right? You can get fined, you can get fired, you can, you know, in Canada, girl, that's kind of like saying the N-word, misgendering someone. I mean, wow. Um, so they have all these things you can't kind of call them. But God forbid the other 99% of the population says, you know what, I don't like the word cis and I would rather you not call me it. Now suddenly it's an issue. No, okay, so I get it. We have to call you guys what you want at all times and you also have to get to call other people what you want at all times so you're just the ultimate arbiter of truth and what can be said and what can't be said and who goes where and who goes what no that's demented and just like calling ballinger you're going to hell for that um no i just, the thing about the word sis is i don't i don't think it's a slur right like I, i'm not putting the word cis in the same category as the anti-gay F word, the N word, you know, like, you know, any slur for women, whatever. I don't think it's the same. However, that's not to say that 99% of the time when you see it being used, it's an angry, upset troglodyte using it, right? It, it's going to be someone like maybe people wouldn't perceive it to be a slur and this is just my tip to all the trans activists out there maybe people wouldn't be picking up that this is a slur or perceiving it as a slur if you didn't mostly use it when you were angry and when you were attacking someone and when you were trying to make some like stupid political point about us versus them like i could totally see how a woman would think like yeah that's like rude 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's because it's like women are just women. It's trans women that require the prefix because it's trans women that are different. It's trans women that are outside of that category of women. I personally believe, can we just be real? The thing I want to know is like, can I just be real or do I have to censor myself even with my audience? Of course not. Okay. So I consider trans women to be a category of men, not a category of women. That is my opinion as a trans woman myself. So don't you dare tell me I can't have my opinion. Lord knows if I sat up here talking about I'm a demi girl that is poly and I also identify as a bookcase. <laughs> Everyone will be saying, oh my God, that's valid. But God forbid I say, you know what? I'm not really the same thing as a woman. And it's like, you can't say that. Okay. So I can call myself any of the infinite list of made up identities that y'all come up with that make no sense. But if I just acknowledge that I'm a whole man, it's like an issue. It doesn't make sense to me. I, I do consider trans women to be more of a category of men than women. That doesn't mean that a trans woman is not its own category. It doesn't mean like, obviously, there is a huge difference between the role I play in my life and all the men in my life. That's a given. However, there's a reason why the word trans is required before a trans woman, because it's a different thing. And the crazy part is people will try to gaslight me and be like, you're so self-hating for for thinking that, you know, you're not a biological woman, whatever. I would consider myself so much more self-hating if I had to sit here every day and like rock myself to sleep. I'm a woman. 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 Please, I'm a woman. That's self-hatred. That's you trying to convince yourself you are something. You are not baby girl, baby boy, baby they. I know full well what I am. So... I'm getting a little bit on a tangent here, but the point is, cis, although I don't think it's a slur and I don't think you should be banned for it, I totally understand why women get annoyed by that because like, if I was just a regular woman, I'd be like, why Why the hell do I have to have a different word for what I am all of a sudden when I've just been a woman my whole life and these trans people, it's like, they're the ones that are different and different is okay. In fact, in my world, in Blair's self-hating world where Blair just hates that she's trans, I actually think being trans is like, beautiful and different and cool and unique and sets me apart from like other people in my life and has afforded me actually a lot of really cool opportunities and I'm not ashamed of it in the slightest in fact I think that it is part of what paints the picture of Blair as a whole person a whole individual and the fact that that is seen as somehow self-hating meanwhile can we judge who's happier, me or the people, the, the people with the trans flags in their bio who are talking about trans women or women? And also, I'm on all these different SSRI <laughs> prescriptions. I'm miserable. I'm homeless. I have a GoFundMe because I can't pay for anything. Y'all are the one trying to fit yourself into a box you don't fit in. I know what box I fit in, baby. I fit in the trans woman box. Not the same thing as woman. I have a wiener. And even if I got a neo vagina, it would still be pretty different than Susan next door, right? Like I would still be different than Susan next door who was born a woman, even if I had a neo vagina. I find beauty in difference. Clearly y'all find shame in difference. The fact that y'all have to sit here and really fix your mouth to lie to the world and yourselves talking about trans women or women. I understand that on a functional, like utilitarian level than in my real life as I walk through the world, it makes a whole lot more sense to allow people to refer to me as a woman, treat me as a woman, call myself a woman when it, you know, when it counts and when it matters in my real life, because that's the role that I'm playing. But if we're sitting here having like a technical discussion about who's what and what's what, which is what y'all are doing, can we just be real like ever or no guess we can't um but i will and i'll continue taking heat for it it's really crazy how i'm seeing like people start to come around and i'm seeing like trans women influencers um say things that i've been saying for the past seven years all of a sudden like i'm gonna put this clip in there's a clip that um 
my old friend Eden the doll is getting some backlash right now because she or actually not a lot of backlash people are agreeing with her she you know did an interview where she said that you know men shouldn't be in the bathroom with you know trans women and women and how it's different and you can't have a beard and expect to go in the women's bathroom I'll put the clip in I don't want a full-grown 40 year old man with a beard that has never seen a hormone in their life that may consider themselves a trans woman I don't want you in the girls restroom no absolutely not you need to earn your spot there even I didn't walk into a girls restroom on day one of my transition that's just not and I didn't expect people to call me a woman or she day two like day one into it no you have to like work your ass off to get to that point mm. you can't expect people to call you by the by the pronoun that you want to be called if you don't look the way that you're supposed to and and that's just me being being ser like being honest you know like we we want to live in a delusion where like we we want everyone to what's your pronoun like no that that's never going to happen and we have to be realistic and i feel like that that's where we're losing with the whole tiktok and the new movement, we're losing realism. How are you gonna go to Starbucks and get mad at the person working and start recording them because they didn't call you a they them when you literally look like a, a, a lesbian with purple hair? You cannot expect to go to a woman's gym and change in front of women having your dick out. And when I saw that, and I've seen a lot of this, by the way, this is just one example. I've seen a lot of trans women coming around and talking about this and I'm like, okay, so we just gonna call Blair White, a Nazi for seven years, and then start saying the same stuff she's been saying and just not say sorry. Okay. Listen, this is what I wanted. I wanted trans women to come to reason, and the more I see it, that's great. But there, let's just say there's no 401k for what I do. So, long story short, is cis a slur? No. Grow up if you think cis is a slur, if you're going to be offended by it. There's a lot of things to be offended by. Words are not one of them. You are what you answer to. If you consider it a slur, you're answering to a slur. I don't consider any of the things people call me, I don't answer to it. So, it's like, whatever. Um, do I think you should be banned for saying it? No. Do I think that the Wokies are stupid as hell, as usual, per usual, Miss Girl, for letting their hypocrisy show? by refusing to let cis people opt out of using the word cis but like they have a long list of words you have to use for them otherwise you're going to get fired from your job or you're going to get banned on a platform see that's the real issue here is that they don't have all the power on twitter anymore and so now it's an issue get used to it because the cult that is y'all is on its way out trust me trust and believe uh, here's a video of someone very upset about the cis thing, by the way, and then we're going to move on. Why doesn't Musk just merge with Truth Social at this point? He's a, a bit idiot. Calling people cis, not slow. You're trying to say non-trans. Okay, fine. Cis people are non-trans. That just means that trans people are the norm and cis people are not. The guy is an idiot. Yeah. Elon Musk, richest person on the planet, owns Twitter. He's the idiot. And you, walking through the Ross parking lot in your finest discount linens, bitching on your Android about a word on his platform being banned, you're the genius here. We should have been listening to you. You're totally right. Uh, but, he, but one of the things that this person said really illuminates the point I'm trying to make, which is no trans is not normal and that's more than okay. Why, why, why does something have to be considered normal to be, it, there are plenty of things that are not normal that are still acceptable. Right. And it's like the definition of normal does not, it, trans doesn't fit that. It's rare. It's clearly some sort of medical condition, but we want to get into that because the same way that you want to destigmatize trans by, you know, refusing to, like calling it normal is the same way you're trying to destigmatize mental illness by refusing to admit there's anything mentally ill about being trans. Again, I do believe. We're not, you're dumb. <laughs> Moving on. All right. So. Let's, let's switch gears a little bit because now it's a little bit more of a serious thing we have to talk about. Colleen Ballinger. Now, 
Colleen Ballinger has always been on a sort of side of YouTube that I have not related much to. I've always found her wholly unfunny, wholly annoying, obnoxious. And I've actually had the thought process of what kind of human being really watches her and A laughs and B comes back for more. Like, I don't know. But there are plenty of things people find entertaining and or funny that I just don't get. And that's fine. The same way that a lot of people find me entertaining and funny. And some people don't, right? Obviously. But the point is, although you have really bad taste if you're like not fucking with me. Uh, so this article really goes into the grooming controversy. It says what happened to Miranda Sings calling Ballinger grooming controversy explained. So the long and short of it here is that several of Colleen Ballinger's former fans have... Uh, really come out against her and accused her of having groomed and taken advantage of them while they were minors. There's so much to unpack here. So accusations include mailing an underage fan underwear. Ew. Where do they do that at? Where do they do that at? Prison? Hosting group chats with underage fans where she asked them any inappropriate questions such as when did they lose their virginity and what were their first periods like. Now, we're not even getting into like all the receipts at this point and the screenshots are not even popping up yet, right? Right off the bat, why are you in group chats with kids? Granted, speaking as a YouTuber myself, I've been in place, I've been placed in many group chats with fans of mine, with all the little Blair White fan pages and like... I love them wholeheartedly, but I am fully aware that most of them are children and there is just nothing to really talk about. What does an adult truly have to talk about with a child? And I'm being completely real. I can't even hold a conversation with at this point. I'm 29, about to be 30. Uh, I can't even hold, I, I can't see myself holding a meaningful conversation with like a 20 year old, 21 year old, 22 year old, like I don't care if that makes me ageist. I'll wear it. Y'all put every other ist on me. Every other ism on me. Add that to the list. Blair White's ableist, misogynist, homophobist, ageist. Sure, I'll take it. Whatever. Um, so that's one thing. Okay. So there's clips going around like uh, this one we're going to play where she's spreading an underage fan's legs apart on stage. And I'm like, ew. <laughs> So the fan whose legs were being spread apart on stage was a child and she's tweeting and saying, um, I'm so sick of being okay with calling people being okay with calling, calling out, but then stopping short when it comes to using certain language, it is okay to call her a groomer and a predator because that's what she is. This is the person on stage saying this. Normal people don't do what she does to children. The whole bit here was that I farted while in this position, which is A, really childish, and two, effing embarrassing when you're already in a vulnerable position. I was only a teenager here, and you can see that I had to stop and cover myself up before I even stood up. Now, this girl also alleges um, that she that Colleen had encouraged her fans that went to these shows to wear revealing clothing so they could get called on stage. And she claims she then exploited us and our bodies for her own gain. So yes, I'm okay with calling her a predator. Really bizarre to tell your underage fans to show up in revealing clothing. That's just bizarre, right? You're you're adding an incentive for them to show up scantily clad and then you're letting them feel as though that gives them a better likelihood of ending up on stage with her, which is going to be the dream of every person showing because they come up and they love you. Um, so right off the bat, yeah, you're taking advantage of children. Um, and as the article states, it's like her, like the child's like spandex was visible when she spread her legs, like super gross. Um, we have to get back to these group chats she's in though, because this is where, this is the part that really was like, okay, we, we got to do a little segment on Miss, Miss Unfunny. Miss never had a funny moment in her life, Colleen Ballinger, um, so this group chat called Colleen's Weenies, which right off the bat, we won't be too dramatic about the title, but like, okay. Um, an underage fan named Adam puts in the chat, my ass looks so good today, y'all. Right off the bat, if you are an adult in a group chat where a child is talking about how their ass looks good, I'm going to need you to hit that leave button. 
right? I'm going to need you to just hit the leave button. Does she do that? No. She actually responds and says, picks Adam. You just solicited pics of a minor's ass in a group chat called weenies. Where do they do that at? Prison? They have iPhones in prison. Did y'all know that? In, in 2023, I have heard that like you go to prison and you straight up like have like a phone and you can like text. Is that not demented? Demented. So maybe Colleen can still post her content. Um, there's more though. So in the Colleen's weenies chat, she says, tell me all the thoughts you had when you first got your periods, please and thank you. Weird. Weirdo shit. The other thing is there's like a bunch of clips about her talking about periods. It's almost like she has a fixation with like menstruation, which I've always. Anyways, uh, another screenshot from the weenies group chat. Are you a virgin? She asks. All right. So you're asking children in the group chat if they're virgins. And, you know, my line of thinking whenever it comes to, like, female diddlers <laughs> is that the the barometer I like to use is would a man get away with this or not? No. A man wouldn't get away with even close to this. So oftentimes I think we have a tendency to overlook predatory, disgusting, like, diddler ass behavior from women because for whatever reason we don't perceive women to be a threat in that way but here to tell you they definitely are i mean anyone can be capable of harming a child and everyone has a sex drive i mean at the very least this is just weird and highly inappropriate even if she's not getting sexual satisfaction out of asking these questions you are asking your child fans if they're virgins their feelings when they got their first period and you've solicited a pic of a child's ass <laughs> but it gets worse hashtag it gets worse remember the it gets better campaign i want to put like it gets worse in my bio or something she says what's your fave position <sighs> where do they do that at prison disgusting so again i would never assume that a man could get away with this so why would colleen now i'm gonna say this as a youtuber myself who has a very dedicated like one thing about my followers and like the longevity i've been able to have over the past seven years is am i one of these youtubers with 20 million subscribers like miranda sings no however i have my cute little million and i have a very dedicated very engaged audience and a lot of my fans are young as opposed to other like right-wing commentators a lot of my fans are young just because i'm a lot more fucking fun i'm not boring i'm not a ben shapiro girl i'm appealing to all ages and all groups so the children come through. However, one thing that I have been aware of the entire time is a fan is not a friend. And I don't want any of the members of the Blair White Army to take that offensively because you guys know I have a very, you know, good rapport with my supporters. I have a good relationship with my fans to the extent that, you know, I feel like I engage with you guys a lot. I interact with you guys a lot. However, Aside from, even if Colleen is not like a groomer or a predator or whatever, even if you just want to say it's just weird behavior and you want to explain it away that she's too close with her fans, this is something you should know as a YouTuber of your size and has been a YouTuber for as long as you, that a fan is not a friend. And you should not be engaging with fans on this personal of a level. In fact, the Blair White fan pages can attest to this. Like, I will respond to them if they're asking a question about my content or reposting something for them. But when they start, like, DMing me asking for, like, advice or whatever, unfortunately, they got to get ghosted because I'm not I'm not trying to talk to a child. I'm not trying to give someone advice that takes them the wrong way. I'm not trying to. I just don't need. I have my friends and then I have my fans and they are separate, right? And if a fan can become a friend, I've had fans become friends, but they're grown and they're my age. You know what I mean? We have something in common. So the fact that she is making this critical error of treating fans 
like friends and ju- is freely like saying stuff that is going to get screenshotted in group chats. It's like, are you stu- Are you stupid? Are you dumb? Are you going to jail? Possibly. I don't know. You can tweet from jail now, so you can continue your content. Um, the point is, there's a line between fan and friend and every YouTuber has to know that because you get caught up in just situations you don't need to be caught up in. But I don't think that's even necessarily the whole story here. I think she really does have like the spirit of the diddler in her. I really do. I mean, even if you like, the thing is like, even if you are just someone who ends up becoming like friends with fans and it's like, you're just doing too much with your fans or whatever, that has shit all to do with talking about, are you a virgin? That is like 101, you don't ask a child that. You better silently hope and pray they are a virgin in your own head, but you don't ask it. Like, what is that? Are you okay? I just find it weird, and I've always found her weird. I mean, she's she's always been like, like you. I've never, I've, like I said, I've never understood it. So more and more fans are coming forward and like, do I think that she's committed any sort of like crime? I don't know. Although, is it legal to mail an underage fan underwear? Probably depends if it's used or not, right? Like, would that be like a contingency? Like, I don't know. Either way, you're clearly walking on some thin lines if Blair White can't figure out if what you did was illegal or not. You're clearly walking a line here, Miss Colleen. And you really need to stop talking to your fans like they're your friends. And you really need to stop to stop asking them sexual questions because it's fucking bizarre. You're bizarre. You're weird. She definitely has like the James Charles effect in the sense of like, can someone remind me again why James Charles it has admitted to and it's just come out that he has sexted underage boys and everyone's like, he can still have his channel. What? Because again, unfortunately, what James Charles and Colleen Ballinger have in common is neither one of them fit the archetype that exists in people's mind of a diddler. When people think of a diddler, they think of a man, usually a straight man. They think of like a creep. They think of like a, you know, 40 year old man, not a 30 year old woman or a young 20 something year old gay boy like James Charles. So that is the cover that they've, you know, been able to maintain but I don't think that's right because one thing you learn when you get older is anyone's capable of this horrific behavior and Colleen you should know better not to get this intimate with fans even if they were like adults in your group chat that were fans why are you asking them if they're virgins or not it's just weird I I don't understand it like don't you have friends you can be texting don't you have group chats with like your friends you gotta have like 13 year old kids like what are you doing So we'll see what happens with her. We'll see if she goes to jail. (laughs) I'm sorry. It's just something funny about Colleen Ballinger being in jail. Like, I don't know. It's just like a funny sight. Like, would she wear the lipstick? I don't know. All right. Elliot Page reveals chilling transphobic attack outside L.A. hotel. Quote, I'm going to effing gay bash you, you F word. So it's very much giving Jesse Smollett realness because Elliot Page, formerly known as Ellen Page, is claiming that this hate crime, which is it a hate crime just for someone to say something to you? Isn't doesn't it have to be like physical? It, does it really constitute as a hate crime for someone to say something to you? I don't know about all that. That to me is strange. But anyways. Um, it says Elliot Page has shared he was verbally attacked and threatened by a crazed transphobic man who shouted that he was the reason he needs a gun in Los Angeles last year. Page, 36, was standing on a corner in West Hollywood on his way to the Pink Dot convenience store when the enraged and hateful stranger approached him shouting obscenities, according to the Los Angeles Times. They said, I'm going to effing gay bash you, you F word, forcing the actor to bolt toward the store in fear. So... A few things wrong with this story. It's giving Jesse Smollett because coming from someone who lived in Hollywood for years, that ain't happening in WeHo, baby girl. 
I'm not calling Elliot baby girl. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm saying just baby girl, baby boy, baby they. That's not like a WeHo occurrence. That's like a oops, I'm in Compton apparent occurrence. And something tells me that the multimillionaire famous actor, Elliot Page, was on in Compton. So first of all, the likelihood of this happening, I mean, I, I really think that these like elitist, like famous libs, like these actors, like they really got to stop writing their own stuff because it's not believable. There's a reason you work with writers when you create your television shows because they know what sounds good. You're trying to do it yourself here, baby, baby, and it's 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 not hitting. Ain't nobody said that in WeHo. Uh, do I know that for a fact? Obviously not. But I'm just here to say it's highly unbelievable. It's about as believable as Jesse Smollett getting yoked up in Chicago at four in the morning, talking about this is MAGA country. Because Chicago isn't MAGA country and WeHo isn't straight country. WeHo is the gay part of town. Sorry, I didn't provide that context for people who don't know. WeHo is the gayest part of Los Angeles. Every street in WeHo has a rainbow on it. You're simply not getting called that on the streets of WeHo. And if you were, someone definitely would have heard it. Someone would have came to your defense just based on the fact that at every hour of every day in WeHo, it is crawling with other LGBT people. No one's getting away with saying that. And also, someone who's about to gay bash you is not going to say, I'm about to gay bash you. They don't let you know they're going to do it. They just do it. How do I know that? Hi. I've had my ass beat behind the anti-gay F slur. A lot. <laughs> Not as an adult, because try it, baby girl, please. But as, as a kid, yeah, I, I grew up in that. That was my life. I've shed blood over that word. I've been jumped over that word. So I kind of know how it plays out. And spoiler alert, when that happened to me, it happened in a very anti-gay area, a very small town in the country where people didn't understand why I looked the way I looked. So that's why it happened. No one's doing that to you in WeHo, Elliot. And the fact that you're putting it out during your book tour, your press release for your book, is a bit suspect for this to happen years ago and not now, right? And also, if, if we're just going to be real, if we're going to be real, this is where everyone says Blair White's mean. But sometimes you just have to say what's the truth regardless of what's mean. A homophobic man who's willing to accost you on the street verbally like that in an area full of gay men is not going to direct that at Elliot Page who, I'm sorry, is like, how tall is Elliot Page? I'm not going to sit here and play the is Elliot passable or not game because y'all are just going to try to act like I'm so evil for that. But sometimes it's on the table when you're talking about things like this because if someone attacks you on the street, it's because of something with your appearance. So how tall is Elliot Page? Elliot is 5'1". I don't think on a good day that when Elliot is walking in an area full of gay men, that Elliot is being perceived as a gay man rather than a small female human. That is my opinion. And an anti-gay man who's walking around picking like gay men to insult for being gay, there's a large pool in WeHo to pick from first before the person who You'd have to look at twice to even figure out kind of what they are, if that's a gay man or not. That is my opinion. And I'm going to stand on that because if I don't stand on that, I'm just not being real. Um, so I don't think it happened. <laughs> just being completely honest. I mean, WeHo is not the place for that to go down. And I'm sorry if you are willing to argue me on that. Like, And if you are, let me know if you've ever been to WeHo. Because I know where the pink dot is. Swimming with gay people. Swimming with trans people. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. No witnesses. You didn't record it. You said you ran into a convenience store. Get the footage. Get the camera footage. 
these celebrities, they thrive and they survive and they make money off attention. Wouldn't you want that video? I don't know. I just don't believe it. And there's nothing else to say about that. So next we have a very insane detransition story, which it's insane that these people are treated the way they're treated. Let's see. This is... um. The caption for this is, Detransitioner describes how she was rapidly placed on hormones at the age of 15, even though she did not have a persistent record of dysphoria. She has detransitioned and isn't even a senior in high school. Imagine, like before we even play this video, look at this baby. Look at this child. This is a baby that has been medicalized and permanently physically altered before she's even a senior in high school. This is a baby. I got on testosterone when I was 15 years old. And the thing that I think is absolutely wild is that I went to one appointment before I was given my prescription. One. And you might be thinking, oh, well, they probably asked you a ton of questions. Nope. They barely asked me anything. I basically walked in there and was like, I'm trans. And they were like, okay. They didn't question me. They didn't sit down with me and question and talk like, is this really what's right for you? They were just like, okay, this is the next step in your transition. We'll give it to you. I was on testosterone for about six months and luckily it didn't affect me super bad. I can still talk in a higher range and pass as female. Of course, there's a lot of changes that are permanent that I'm gonna have to live with for the rest of my life. After about two years of living as a male, I realized I was wrong. But I didn't come out about that right away. I stayed living as male for another year before I really finally decided that I needed to do this. And it was one of the most scary things that I ever did. I faced so much backlash. I found it that people are so quick to accept trans people, but so quick to criticize detransitioners. Once I detransitioned, all my mental problems were gone. I'm happy. That was my issue. The fact that I'd convinced myself that I was a dude. Okay, so... There's a lot to unpack here. How many people have to come forward and say that they were placed on hormones or approved for surgery in one fell swoop, one appointment, before we stop the whole talking point of, you know, there's a system in place and, you know, doctors work together with parents in tandem with psychologists to make the right decision about the... No. That is not what's happening. I don't care if that's even what's on paper. That's not what's happening. I was an adult when I detransitioned, but same here, girl. I walked in and out about 20 minutes and got an estrogen prescription. And granted, I'm an adult, but this just goes to show you, it's not just adults that they're putting through the system very quickly. It's babies. It's children. It's young girls with their entire life ahead of them. And she still does have her entire life ahead of her. I'm not going to take that away from her. Um, but she clearly has been like, the voice ain't going back. And it's not as bad as a lot of, you know, detransitions I've seen. Um, but there's clearly altering her voice she'll have to deal with forever. And, you know, she didn't really go into like the social, you know, sort of stigma of detransitioning, but I can't imagine, you know, convincing everyone around me in my life, like, this is who I am. This is the right move for me. I know what I'm doing. I know who I am. This is my truth. And then having them all doubt you, I'm sure at first, cause that's how it goes. And then be like, actually, you guys were all right. That's painful. I applaud her for having the wherewithal to do that, um, to realize the decision was wrong for her and not go further with it because who knows what another year or two or whatever on hormones would have done to her. But look what they're doing to these children. You know, every day I'm told like, Blair, when are you going to address the anti-trans legislation happening in all these states? And it's like always a ban on kids going on hormones. <laughs> and I'm supposed to be like, Oh my God, they're coming for trans people. No, y'all are coming for kids. And when they start really do coming for trans people, y'all are going to want to blame people like me who are trying to speak out. But no, it's your fault. It's your fault you are causing this. So my heart goes out to her because she's absolutely right. People are so quick to support trans people. But then you detransition and go figure because it's a cult. They treat you exactly how a cult would. Ask anyone who's left the Westboro Baptist Church. Didn't we say earlier in this episode, it's like some Westboro Baptist shit? 
go talk to anyone who's left any of these religions or any of these cults. It's always an issue. You're excommunicated. You are treated badly. You are love bombed when you come out as trans and then you are shunned when you realize it was a mistake. And I was having this discussion earlier the other night, um, off camera, how it really is insane how females are affected by the trans stuff so much more and the sense of the things that they do to their bodies are so much more permanent. Um, the hormones affect them in such a more drastic way. For example, estrogen did not change my voice. I know everyone's like, how'd you get your voice like that? First of all, I think my voice is kind of clocky, but I actually kind of like it. But um, I never trained my voice. This is just my voice, right? Estrogen doesn't change that for males. Testosterone wrecks your voice as a female. Males who are trans, this is the exception of bottom surgery, obviously, because bottom surgery for biological males is obviously very extreme. Um, and so is bottom surgery for females. But the bottom surgery is a lot harder to get as a biological male. They don't put minors through that as often as they put minors through top surgery when they're female. And then, oh, well, if you regret it too bad, you can never feed your children in the future if you can even have children, right? Because the testosterone also makes you infertile. So if you can even ever have children, you can't ever feed them with your breasts because we cut those off by the time you were 13. And here's where everyone says, it's not 13. Yeah, it is. You got to get caught up to speed. It's happening to 13-year-olds. This is a 15-year-old placed on testosterone. I know I have firsthand experience going into the same clinic that I got my transition surgeries at and them telling me that they had to, because of a recent law in Texas, cancel appointments for 12 to 17 year olds because they could no longer do top surgeries on those patients. They were doing top surgeries on 12 year olds. Do you even have breasts at 12? I didn't develop as a female at 12, so I don't really know when they first start sprouting, but I don't really see 12 year olds with anything to cut off if I'm being honest. So what are they even finding on the body to cut off? Um, you know, the detransition wave is undeniable. The detransition wave is here. It is only going to escalate to a huge extent. And this is something that I have yet to see the trans community actually form a coherent rebuttal to like whenever I see trans people talk about the detransition community and wave and the reddit page and all that they really only talk about how these people are grifters and how they're trying to just take trans people down because everything's about them right because they're narcissists it's not that it's a deeply you know it's not that it's a person who was traumatized in some way or hurt in some way by the medical system telling their story and trying to help others in their position it's about y'all right it's about them trying to take you down by sharing their story Right. Everything's about you, motherfuckers. God, I just cannot stand this. We have the trans community. I could really go off about it all day. Because it really is demented. Um, I hate when I hate when I see this. I really hate when I see children affected by this, you know. Adults as well, but it's like <laughs> honestly, everyone says, Blair, what are you gonna do when they restrict health care for adults? At some point. At what point do they not put a pause on all of it when this is what's happening, when this level of malpractice is happening? We talked about the clinic in St. Louis. Again, not saying I support taking away adults' right to transition, but if I would, if, if I sat up here and really said that it would make no sense for them to put all of it on pause considering the incredible amount of harm that they're doing in the current state, it's like, would they be completely wrong for that? I don't know. You decide. But... The other day in my destiny debate, I was talking about the clinic in St. Louis that was putting kids on hormones that were identifying as non-binary cats. Whose gender identity was changing day to day, wasn't even stable, and they were placing these kids on hormones. And you want to tell me this is an industry that deserves to thrive? I don't think so. So again... These people are going to have to come up with some sort of explanation and way to handle the D-trans community because it's only growing. And um, all my love and support goes out to this young girl. And um, I'm glad you got out while you could with, you know, minimal repercussions. Um, and I hope that you live an amazing life as the woman that you are, Miss Girl. Let's react to woke TikToks. 
are you guys feeling the pony? I'm trying to give you guys different looks. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to do the headband shit. I'm trying to do like a little pony look. I'm trying to give versatility. Let me know if I'm failing. Okay. <laughs> did, did you already see? Let's see what this this young thing has to say. I hate when people say that wheelchairs are only for people who need them. Because when they say that, what they mean is wheelchair users are for people who are paralyzed. But not everyone who is a wheelchair user, who uses a wheelchair, who needs a wheelchair, is paralyzed. Because if you're going to do away with wheelchairs for anyone who has the physical ability to stand for like a couple seconds, I think we should do away with strollers. Because toddlers can stand. They can walk. They can walk pretty far, actually. If you hold their hand, they can get around fine. You know why we use strollers? Because we do need them. We just lose weight, girl. Like, just do that. Like, in the time it took you to record this two-minute TikTok, you could have done, like, 100 push-ups. wild wild and people sometimes get on me because it's like Blair why are you being so mean to like the fat positive you know tiktokers or whatever but it's like I'm sorry I see so much parallel with like the trans community and trans influencers on tiktok and like this in the sense of y'all are really living in an alternate reality you are comparing toddlers and strollers to your own inability to walk on your own without a wheelchair because you have gluttoned yourself, you have eaten yourself to such a state that your body cannot even support your weight walking around and you will still sit up on camera talking about fat is beautiful. That ain't beauty. You know, they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but sometimes the vote is unanimous and I'm not saying you're not beautiful on the inside. I'm not saying you don't have nice skin, beautiful face, whatever, but that body is going to fail. Sounds like it's already failing that you can't even walk on your own. And I know that my delivery is, oh, wow, Blair White is being a kind. And not just because I am, but also I do have a lot of empathy for people like this because like I've said before, whenever I am depressed going through it that's when I start losing control of my body if you haven't noticed I'm snatching down right now because I'm in a better place than I was a few weeks ago y'all saw the thickness and and she's she's sucking back in because she's happier and I do want that for this this woman you know no hate to her it's just like lose weight you know your weight is not the world's problem you know, the fact that you even have it within you to be like, what do I want to complain about today on the internet? People that don't like that I use a wheelchair. You shouldn't like that you use a wheelchair, girl. You should hate it. You should resent it. You should use it as motivation to get your life together. But instead, you're going to make these little videos on TikTok and you're going to have this lived out comment section that's like, yes, queen. Slay. That is beautiful. I bet you can still catch a dick, though. Yeah, we know. Anyone can catch a dick. Anyone can catch a dick. Literally anyone of any group can go out, find a dick, suck it, fuck it, ride it. Because that's what men do. They put their dick in anything. It's not really a flex to say, because that's one of their big talking points. People say I'm fat, but I could still catch a dick. Baby, there's a reason why there's a certain amount of gerbils found up men's asses every year in hospitals because men are gross and men are disgusting and men will fuck anything. You leave a pie on the counter and a man may or may not put his dick in it. Right? So is it a flex that you can catch a dick? Not really. It's a flex when you're turning down dicks. That's a flex. All right, next, TikToker explains that kid-friendly Pride events doesn't mean there shouldn't be kink, saying kids and kink can coexist at Pride. Someone call the cops. Is this Colleen Ballinger's cousin? Y'all related? Y'all kind of look similar. Y'all got that whole basic vibe? Anyways, let's play. I want to clarify this for a second here. I'm not saying that kink isn't kid-friendly. 
I'm saying that kids and kink can coexist at Pride in a totally fine way. There's a nuance here that making an event kid friendly doesn't mean sanitizing it, aka taking something like kink out of Pride. Making Pride kid friendly is not the same thing as sanitizing Pride. Making a Pride event kid friendly, or I, I prefer kid safe is about making sure we're including and putting kid and youth voices and including them in pride and particularly any justice spaces. Y'all smell that shit? Y'all smell the hot dog water that is clearly emanating off her body? The aroma of hot dog water? Raw? Like boiled three days ago and just sitting on the stove type shit? Because you know she smells. Some background on this woman, now that I'm remembering who she is. She ran a channel for a long time on YouTube called Queer Kid Stuff. And she's one of the earliest people I dragged. So welcome home to Blair White's channel, Miss Girl. But uh, I'm going to say what I always said back then, which is, first of all, I can smell you through the screen, like I said. And second of all, stop being a fucking creep. The fact that you fixed your mouth to say kids and kink can coexist baby i can't coexist with you you need to be in jail with colleen ballinger because that is an insane statement you are disgusting the fact that again who even thinks like, as someone who picks up my phone regularly and like bitches to the world about what I think is right and wrong, what I want to see the change in the world, I could never imagine thinking it was a productive use of my time to take issue with the people that don't want kids to see kink and be like, this is really the fight I'm going to take up right now. You guys need to know that kink can come like that. This is your fight? Man. I sure do miss the days when libs were fighting for like climate change and like anti big pharma and like now they're fighting to show kids kink. You're musty and you're dusty. And you're going to hell for that. You're going to hell for that. I'll see you there, but like you're going to hell for that for sure. All right. Tennessee tattoo shop owner goes on unhinged rant, threatens conservatives. If they come to his shop, I will actually hurt you. Says he hopes they get sick and die. You can just tell from the picture. This is one of those mother fucking like just such a tough guy, right? Like such a lived out. There, there's nothing worse than the lived out straight man. You're the worst of all worlds. You're harnessing this like bitch ass feminine like energy and you're also using your like male aggression to like threaten people. It's like, you're the worst of all worlds, sir. Speaking as someone who's the best of all worlds, you're the worst of all worlds. You gotta love it when religious conservatives and uh, racists, which <laughs> more often than not go hand in hand, uh, come into your tattoo shop, which by the way, I, I like to keep it a little dark in here. I don't like a lot of overhead lights. This reminds me of a hospital. If you were either one of those things, or both, you're not gonna have a good time. Not here, okay? Take your small-minded bullshit back to your fucking church. And then, you know, shove a Bible. I like how these small minded ones are the ones that have a religious conviction, which actually does require you to, in some ways, think in the abstract, right? Like, I actually think in some ways religious people are a lot more open minded than me because I believe in what I see in, in right in front of me. Like, I don't believe in shit that I can't see. So they got to really stretch their mind to believe in that shit. How are you not the small minded person that you are literally sectioning off a group of people writing them off as intolerable 
Like you literally are closing your mind off to people and calling them the small minded people. I would love to fight him. No shade. Like he reminds me of like, there is such a side to me. Y'all don't know. <laughs> For real. He reminds me of like every like piece of shit that I would like beef with in my late teenage, like early 20 years out at parties. Just, just the fucking arrogant, like I'm fucking tough because I have finger tattoos. Motherfucker. I would love to fight you. But anyways, calm down, sir. You're acting like a bitch. Faye is one of my newer pronouns. So I use they, Faye, and pup pronouns currently. And Faye for me is because I am a fairy. I am fairy gender. And Faye is really just validating that part of my identity. So yeah, Faye pronouns because I'm a fairy. Pop it up. God save the children. Fathers, stay in your children's lives. This fatherlessness is an epidemic. I need I need someone to help this person. I am actually not trying to dogpile or be mean to this person because this is she's going through it. She's going through it. That phobia and racism are two completely separate things, but they're not. All bigotry in our culture is rooted in white supremacy. White supremacy sets an ideal, and any deviation from that ideal is discriminated against. Obviously, this goes for race, but it also includes the person's size. In our culture, skinny people are upheld as the ideal. There's also racism behind why skinniness is considered the ideal. Because as white women... I'm sorry, I was like completely bored by her and I was just like posing in the mirror. Um, you're painfully boring, sis. And the fact that you could fix your mouth Karen, Deborah, Susan, whatever the fuck, cause you know it's one of those names. How dare you compare fat phobia to racism? Something that really affects real people, that really keeps them back in life, that has really harmed people, and you wanna be included in that so damn bad? Victim culture has warped your little Karen mind so damn bad that you just need to be marginalized in some way. So you've looked down and said, well, I look like shit. So that's me being marginalized by the world. Everyone hates me because I look like shit. No, baby. Also, while I was not paying attention, I think I did hear out of my peripheral, I did hear her say that whiteness determines all of beauty standards. That is not true at all. First of all, I don't think thinness is even like the beauty standard these days. I think like being thick is the beauty standard, having a big ass, big hips, which is definitely not a white trait. That is definitely something set by black media, rappers, hip hop artists, Nicki Minaj, et cetera. You know all the girls. That's like definitely an example of black culture setting a beauty standard for all of America. So you're not even making sense. You're not even with the times, girl. And also, I'm going to say what I said to the first girl. You could do all that. You could say all that, or you could like just lose weight. That would be a lot easier, a lot more productive, and you'd be around for longer. You'd live longer. Not that I want to hear that mouth much longer, but you'd live longer, and that's a good thing. So get it together. You are not marginalized or oppressed because you are fat. Um, I will pray for you, though, babe. All right, next. If you celebrate the 4th of July... This man has a message for you. For the first time in our lives, if you choose to celebrate the 4th of July in 2023, you will not be seen as a patriot, as someone who is thankful for living in the United States of America. You will be seen as a potential domestic terrorist. Wow. Did y'all hear something? Because I heard a bunch of incoherent, ignorant, bullshit ramblings, but I don't think I heard anything worth responding to. I will say, I cannot wait for the 4th of July. Pride Month is wearing on me uh, pretty heavily. I'm a little sick of the gay shit. Um, not that I don't love the gays. I do love the rational gays um, and the rational T's and all that shit. But, you know, I'm, I'm ready to 
work my way out of Pride Month and work my way into July 4th. You know, I have the red, white, and blue aesthetic. That's kind of like the branding colors for Blair White. And I just am ready to get there. So I will definitely be celebrating. I will be eating hot dogs. Not the kind of hot dog that's left boiled on the stove for two days like the TikToker reacted to a little bit a while ago. Um, they'll be cooked well done, you know. <sighs> this was an insane episode full of insane people. And I'm also insane. But somehow keeping it together better than them, which is a problem, by the way. You know when you're watching like a train be the same one in the room amongst other people, there's an issue. So um, I'm going to leave you guys to think about that issue. And then I will see you in the next episode of The Blair Wire Project. Peace.